Turn family, happy new years to you. Today is January 1st, 2020, and I am getting ready to prepare my New Year's Day meal. So we're going to be having field peas and steak and collard greens. So let me get my camera situated and we're going to get started. Now bear with me. Okay, so I'm using canned peas. I'm making it easier on myself. I have three cans of these, and these are the Lord Chesterfield field peas with snaps. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and dump them in my pot. Let me grab my spoon, y'all. I always forget to get something when I start. But anyway... Take about a minute here. Okay, so I have my burner on. Make sure it's heating up, and it is. But sometimes that one heats, sometimes it don't. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and add these three cans in here. And what I'm doing, I'm going to cook them just a little bit more. Not a whole lot, just a little bit more. And then once I get them to the desired seasoned taste, then we are actually making hoppin', well, I am actually making hoppin' john, which is a New Year's tradition. And my son loves it. So does my husband. So, I'm gonna show you. This is what you get with one can. So I'm gonna add three of these cans. And I'm not taking the snaps out. I'm leaving them in. And I'm going to get them seasoned to taste. And then once I get them seasoned to taste, I will go in with two cups of uncooked rice. And we're going to let all of it cook together. And that is actually what's called Hoppin' John. A lot of people use the dry peas or black eyed peas. I hate black eyed peas. So that's not an option for me. This is my third can. And it smells so good just coming out of the can. So now I'm going to give you a peek at what three cans look like. So now this is three cans. And it's about halfway the pot. So once I add my rice in here and get it all seasoned down and let it cook, it will be a delicious pot. So I'm going to go off camera and let this cook down some, and then I'll be back to finish adding the rice and showing you the rest of my meal. So stay tuned. Okay, family, I have my beans on in the back. I got them seasoned, and I am frying some smoked joe to go in them. And once I get this smoked joe cooked, I'm going to put that in the pot with my beans and add my rice in. For our meat, we are having some steaks. So I'm going to go off camera and get those washed and seasoned and ready to go. Because I'm not trying to make this video too long. And also, I didn't buy greens, y'all. I had greens left over from another meal. Because nobody hardly eats them. We're going to finish these up. And that's going to be done. So y'all stay tuned. Okay, family, so I have my beans, and they have cooked down. I've already seasoned them. So now what I'm doing is dropping my smoked meat in the beans. That's going to give it some more flavor. I'm not adding the, the oil. Let me move this off this burner because that burner is still hot. Excuse me. I'm going to stick this down here in my sink so I don't get burned. Okay. So I'm going to give it a good stir and the meat is already done and what's going to happen is that it's going to tender up while it's cooking in this rice and the beans but it's going to add so much more flavor. 
So now, let me get this out of my way. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I washed and drained two cups of white rice, and I'm just gonna add this into my pot and stir it and let it go. And if I need to add more liquid, I'll be able to tell once this rice starts to dry out. And if the grain look like it's a little hard, then I'll know I'll need to uh, to add some more liquid to it. But for right now, I'm not adding any more. I'm going to get all of my rice out of this bowl here. Y'all, I'm not going to be in nobody's kitchen all day today. So I'm taking a short way out with this Hoppin' John. And it's going to be just as good. These field peas, this brand of field peas in the can is delicious. But like I said, if you prefer to cook the dry peas, honey, help yourself. Any way that I can make a shortcut for myself and my food is still going to turn out amazing, I'm going to do it. Okay, so now I'm just stirring all of this together. Oh, it looks so good. Smell even better. Season well. So I'm going to let it simmer until most of the liquid goes out of my pot. And then I'm going to transfer it to this back burner so I can go ahead and start seasoning my steak and get that going. Once I get that done, y'all, I'm done. Done for the... Oh, camera fail. Y'all bear with me here. This is real life, so I'm not even going to edit it out. Glad it didn't break. That's the second time my camera actually fell or my phone. Because I'm filming with my phone. And that's the second time. I'm going to put you on pause just to get it straight. I'll be right back. Okay, y'all. So I apologize for that little mishap. But I do have my rice moved to the back. And it is steaming down. It's drying out. So I'm just going to let that go. And now what I'm getting ready to do is to fix these steaks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pan sear them and then I'm going to saute some peppers and onions and make a gravy to go on it. So I've already seasoned them. I'm just waiting on my pan to get hot again. And then we're going to go ahead and get started with that and I'll be done y'all. Thank you Jesus. I will be done. Okay. So I just want to make sure that it's good and hot. And I'm cooking this on a medium heat. I still have my stove on number five. If you have a stove that have numbers. But really, you have to go by. Once you start cooking on your stove, you'll know what setting to use. And that's the same thing with your oven. Everybody's oven and everybody's stove is different. And it also cooks different if you're using gas or if you're using electric. My stove is an electric, the electric range, so. Okay. So we'll give it a few more minutes. And then we're going to get started with that. And y'all, I'll be so glad to be done. I have done a lot of cooking in these last three holidays. And I don't mind cooking, but whew, it starts to get to you after a while when they're so close together. So while I'm waiting on my pan to finish heating up, I'm going to tell you what I seasoned my steak with. I used my Flavor Gods Lemon and Garlic Seasoning. And I also used my garlic powder. Trying to make sure y'all can see that. I used some Accent, which is a flavor enhancer. And some black pepper. So I'm going to go ahead and move these out of the way. Because I'm done with that. 
and I will be using some of this Maggie Polo beef powdered bouillon to make my gravy for the steaks. I'm going to open it up and let you see how it looks. They have the chicken flavor, which I've used that, and they have the beef. And y'all, you can use this not only on meat, but they're good on veggies. It just gives you an added layer of flavor. So I believe my, my frying pan is ready. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in. And I did, I did season both sides, as you can see. Both sides were seasoned. And like I said, all I'm going to do is sear it on both sides. And I like to put some foil down. That's going to catch some of that seasoning that actually falls off to the side whenever you're cooking. And it helps for easy cleanup as well. That piece, and I'm just going to do a couple of pieces at a time. And I do have six pieces, so. Actually, it was three big chunk steaks, and what I did was just cut them in half. Because you're not going to eat that much meat at one time. y'all a peek at my rice so you can see what it looks like now and just to let you know I did not add any more liquid to it you have to use your own judgment with that and according to what size pot so this is what it's looking like yeah it's called hopping john and I got it on a low heat and I'm just letting it dry out See, I'm just getting that nice char on it. I'm going to flip that over. I'm not cooking it all the way. But once I put my gravy on it and it starts to cook in that gravy, it's going to finish cooking all the way through. This is just like if you do a, a roll, a beef roll. You, uh, most people, I know my grandmother used to actually brown hers before she cook it all the way through and the drippings in the pan y'all it gives you a magnificent flavor so a lot of these things y'all see me doing and the way i cook i learned them from my grandmother when she was living but she's been dead now for so many years i was in the 10th grade and we were out on summer vacation when she actually passed away and it was the night before the first day of school in my 11th uh my foot no it was, I was in the 11th grade it was the night before my 12th grade school year she passed away I had been down there with her staying with her in Charleston and she actually had a surgery, a gall stone surgery, and she never recovered from it. So when I left to come back home to get myself ready for school the next morning, as soon as we got back home, we got a phone call that she had passed away. So we had to turn right back around and drive back to Charleston. But anyway, I'm glad I got the opportunity to learn a lot of her cooking skills and her techniques. And I hear a lot of my family tell me, especially my cousin Constance, she said, you cook like grandma. So, yeah. All right, let me check this. Okay, so that is what I'm looking for right there. That char on both sides. So, I'm going to take that out. And don't worry, if you still see a little bit of red on it, don't worry about that, because it's going to see the cooking in the actual cooking process. Oh, yeah, yep, golden brown char. 
that's what you're looking for. So I'm going to go off camera and finish browning these. And when I come back, I'll be getting ready to put my gravy on it because I don't want to make this video too long. So y'all stay tuned. Okay, y'all, so I'm back and I have got all my meats pan seared. And I just want to show you the drippings in the pan. And it has just a dab of oil in it. Don't throw that away, y'all. I'm getting ready to saute my bell peppers and onions in that. And that's going, that's where all of your flavor is. And it's going to loosen up once you pour your liquid into your frying pan. All that goodness on the bottom is going to loosen up. And that's going to help make your gravy thick. So let me turn my pan down because it is smoking hot. Turn it down some. The one thing about cast iron, when it gets hot, it's hot. So these are my bell peppers and onions. And I'm just going to toss them in. And let them saute down. And you can take your spoon or whatever you're using. I'm just trying to loosen up some of that stuff on the bottom. I'm not even going to put any seasoning on these veggies because there's so much seasoning in this pan right now. And that chart on the bottom is just where the meat uh, cooked and the seasoning came off in the pan. So that's seasoning. I'm not going to take that off. That's what helps give your flavor. And there's nothing like the smell of sauteed bell peppers and onions before you can even get your actual meat into the pan it will have your kitchen smelling so good it's nice and fragrant so i hope you all enjoyed this little video today i just want to share with you what i was doing for my our new year's not anything big because like i said we've been i've been cooking so much for the past three holidays it's just, i'm just trying to wind it down but I got the main thing. I got the peas. I got the greens. And hey, that's what most people, and I had um, the smoked joe. That's what most people usually have for New Year's. I mean, different people use different things. But hey, to each his own. As long as you and your family are happy with what you're eating, that's all that matters. And my Hoppin' John is still cooking. I did start from the bottom. I don't want it to be moist on the bottom and try on the top. I'm going to give you guys another look at how it's coming along. And this is what it's looking like. And when you're cooking a dish like that, y'all, it's hard to tell you how much stuff to use because it all depends on the size pot you're using. So a good cook should know their cookware. And what I mean by that is you should know what if you cook often in your pots and pans, you should know how much your pots can hold. So you have to use that as a guide. Okay, I'm not going to cook these too long because they're going to continue cooking while my meat is finishing up with the gravy. And in here, this is a two-quart... Uh, measuring cup and what I did I added about a spoonful one of these spoonfuls here and a half of the Maggie Polo the beef flavor and that's going to be the base of my gravy it's right here is what I added okay the onion that's in there so now I'm going to go ahead and toss my meat in here and then pour my gravy on it and I'm going to let that simmer down until the gravy is thick and the meat is done and good and tender. And all I'm doing is just laying this meat right on top of my veggies. And y'all, I can assure you that it's going to be delicious. And I also want to mention that the Maggie Polo has cornstarch in it. So you don't have to add any flour or anything with it when you're using it. Because the cornstarch itself will be thickening agent. I'm getting hungry, y'all, just smelling this. 
haven't eaten since breakfast, so it's about that time. And I'm going to pour this gravy right on off into this pan here. Can you hear hot sizzling? And now I'm just going to add my gravy mix right into this pan. I'm going to pour it like on the side. It may not take all of it at first, and it may, but you never want to overcrowd your pan. And don't pour it directly on your meat because you don't want to wash off all that good seasoning that's on there. So yeah, I think it'll hold all of this. So okay. that's that. So y'all, what I'm gonna do now is let this simmer until it is nice and tender and my gravy is thick, nice and golden brown. And then I will definitely be back. I'm going to put a top on this and let this simmer. And then I'll be back to show you all my final product. Stay tuned. Okay, family. So I am done with this meal. I want to show you what my steak looks like. And see the beautiful brown gravy that the Maggie Polo made. And it is seasoned very well. This is my finished product. There's the Hoppin' John, the greens, and the steak. That is one of my husband's, one of his favorite meals. So, i just like <clears throat> to thank all of my loyal supporters for stopping by and checking me out on today. And I hope you guys have a wonderful new year. And if you like what you see on this video, give me a like. Give me a comment. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Each time, you will be aware when I do a new upload. And I love you all with the love of Jesus. And I'd like to say to all my people that have already subscribed, thank you so much. You are appreciated over here more than I could probably ever tell you. So, y'all have a wonderful evening. Goodbye.